downtown New Orleans. The setting in this dome just serves to amplify the excitement of the folks in New Orleans as their Saints burst from the tunnel a moment ago. They're set, and we're set as well as the Saints get ready to do battle with the Philadelphia Eagles. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll make it across the 20. Breeze now on first down. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Breeze to throw on second down. And he finds a man with a crossing route. Oh, he's got a little daylight. Similar to a slant, it's all about timing when you're throwing a crossing route. Quarterback and receiver have to be in sync, and when they put it on them just right and catch it full speed, running through a defense, can often result in a big pickup of yardage. And a full Heisman winner. This is Mark Ingram. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Michael Bennett's versatility, being able to play any position along the defensive front, allows him to make those types of plays. He finds good matchups and gets into the offensive backfield. And there it works for a tackle for loss. Running with Camara. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Nigel Bradham brings him down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the... And it's intercepted at the goal line. The second it was leaving his hand. Go, go, go. Black, black. Now falls. Looking for Jeffrey, and it's intercepted. to the 36-yard line. Well, Charles, a little bit earlier, you were talking about the first time that the Saints and Eagles met up earlier this season as we think about their upcoming playoff game, which you will be calling, by the way. But 48-7 was the final in Week 11. What are the keys in this upcoming game? Well, for New Orleans, an intact offensive line would be a great start. They were dinged up a little bit down the stretch. Their ability to run the football with Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara allows Drew Brees to make those throws downfield to guys like Mike Thomas and make the big plays and, of course, swing it out to Kamara out of the backfield. On the defensive side of the ball, their ability to pressure Nick Foles will actually be a key in this game. Cam Jordan, their all-pro defensive end, pop a big hand in that. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Oh, and this ball's tipped and intercepted. receiver you've got to understand where you are in the field middle portion you know it's going to come in hot square your body to the quarterback and be ready to make the catch he's going to fire one deep middle of, looking for jeffrey and it's intercepted Yeah. 
picked up by Marcus Williams. And this one will be returned to right around the 38-yard line. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. So after the INT, it's Breeze. And here's another interception, the third of this first quarter. Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. And job one here, Charles, just keep possession of the football. Two drives, two turnovers to this point. You're exactly right, Doctor. If the crowd go, the first do no harm. And right now, they're harming themselves on offense. I like that. No one is mistaking me for a doctor, though. But thank you, Dr. Davis. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. They give to Smallwood, and he'll get it up here this time to the 21. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. Exactly what they needed right there, because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off, because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit. A run with Smallwood. Able to slither by, and he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace it. They run small rules, and nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. In on the tackle, Alex Okafor. Some of these play calls, I think they're a little conservative. Well, you know me, because it's easy to set up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and then think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up, because otherwise this defense is going to gang up on the run and set them down. And he will have the first down, but he winds up paying for it pretty good. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. There's Smallwood. And he'll work this one up to about the 38. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. On second down, Adams into the 42-yard line here and brought down there. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. It's almost a tendency break. Slipped one tackle, but no more as he's knocked to the deck behind the line of scrimmage. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. This man was a saint for three years. It's Darren Sproles. And in four years, it's Darren Sproles. And then able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. Give him nine there. They still need six more now on third down. remain in a scoreless first half. We go, We're go. back to New Orleans after this. Hey. On play action, they'll throw. And Jeffrey's got it. And they're well 
past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. Good for an Eagles first down. Wentz hooking up with Jeffrey. I don't care how many times we see it. I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they... Touchdown, Philadelphia! Nelson Aguilar, 42 yards, and the Eagles are able to cash it in for six. The catch and the touchdown, they were the end result of a terrific route run by the receiver. Elliott good on the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Elliott now to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. Now the Saints offense, they get ready to go back to work here. And three interceptions in this game. And I would have to think, I wasn't a quarterback, but number four is kind of, oh, you're like, oh, man, I can't throw four. No, what's interesting is what do the coaches decide to do now? Having thrown three, do you alter your offensive strategy? Do you take the ball out of his hands and maybe turn to the running game? Or do you have that supreme confidence that he's going to turn things around? <laughs> we'll see what they do. On second down, Kamara. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Tackle made that time by Brandon Graham. Well, when you go from second to four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense. And he's taken to the ground, but he was pulled down by the face mask. Here come the flags. And I believe this is going to be a first down. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoyed the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the flag. You did it. I had to. Over the middle, open is Thomas. And he'll have it past midfield. Oh. to the 40 before being taken down. A good pick up there, 22. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Left, 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 left. On second down, here's Breeze. And this is a catch by Ted Ginn. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 23 yards on the play. Into the red zone, it's Breeze. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Escaping the pressure right. On the run, he'll let it go deep, right sideline. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. All right, hang on, we'll jump over halftime. So we've reached halftime here, and it's our visitors, the Eagles, leading this one. That's fielded in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. 
Out come the Eagles now as they'll go on offense first here in the third quarter. They have the lead now. They'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you term that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their playbook. They like what they did in the first half. That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about, change things up a little bit. Change your tendencies, try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. We'll see if they do just that. And once again, they go with Sproles. It's a seven yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, gonna make that defense stand up and stop them. Now it's hit running right, it's Smallwood. And the play goes nowhere, losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Again, it's Smallwood. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. And he connects with Ertz. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That his first catch so far. They've held him under wraps, but he's got a first down there. So in Saints territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. Foles. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. that incompletion Charles a big story as it always is come January head coaching changes around the NFL if, if you count the situations in Cleveland in Green Bay that's eight openings all told and that's about the openings all told Damn! number people were starting to predict somewhere around mid-season I think out of all of them the Marvin Lewis situation in Cincinnati he had been there for 16 years. Many thought he might stay, but it seemed like it was a mutual deal where he decided to step down. But out of all of them, there may be one or two that may recirculate within the league and be a head coach at another spot. Tough for Steve Wilkes after just one season to be let go. Yeah, that doesn't happen very often in this league. He was the unfortunate recipient of way too many injuries on his team. Never got a chance to get off the ground. You mad, bro? Why you mad, bro? I ain't mean to make you sad. Yo, my bad, bro. So what you mad for? Why you mad, bro? Why you mad? Why you mad? Why you mad, bro?